scientists at the University of Tokyo in Japan were successfully able to bind human skin onto a robotic face. The team, led by Professor Shoji Takeuchi, were able to attach a mix of living skin cells that had been cultured and grown in a lab onto a resin base. They used V-shaped perforations in the resin, and then filled them with collagen that attached to the skin to anchor it onto the resin base. They were able to create two models. The first is an incredibly simple 2D round face that has electrical motors which move the cultured skin into an eerie simulacrum of a smile. This was done to prove the advantage lab-grown human skin has over artificial. Unlike artificial robotic silicone skin, the living skin is much more elastic, able to change shape easily without becoming damaged. This might also be able to provide robots in the future with a more human-like appearance, and the ability to form more human-like expressions. The scientists also successfully attached the skin to a 3D resin model, which did not move. There are still many problems with this approach, such as the problem in keeping cultured human cells alive for a long period on the robot. Despite that, Professor Takeuchi is hopeful that in the future, blood vessels can be successfully added to the skin to provide it with the nutrients needed to keep it alive for long periods of time. He's also thinking of adding sweat glands and fat to give the skin a more human appearance, in addition to nerves and sensory organs to provide the ability for robots to be able to accurately sense things. While the use of human skin on robots is still some ways in the future, there exist other fields where this technique could be put to use. The cosmetics and the drug industry, for example, where certain products can be tested safely on the cultured skin. This also shows promise in use in plastic surgery, where this skin could be grafted onto burn victims or those whose skin has been damaged beyond repair. Researchers were able to implant human brain cells into mice, which managed to make them smarter. Steve Goldman, a researcher at the University of Rochester Medical Center in New York, and his team, took immature glial cells from donated human fetuses into mouse pups. The glial cells are responsible for maintaining and strengthening the connections between neurons, among other things. The glial cells, which were immature, then started proliferating, and in a year had taken the place of the mice's own glial cells. The results were mice who had mice neurons, but with the rest of their brain cells being of human origin. The mice were then subjected to several tests measuring cognition and memory which were compared to the results of a control group which had fully mouse brains. The results were shocking. The mice implanted with human brain cells were much smarter than normal mice, scoring higher in tests of cognition and memory. This was because human glial cells, mostly astrocytes which form connections between neurons, are 20 times the size of mice astrocytes, and form 10 times as many connections. These larger astrocytes are what researchers claim are responsible for the increase in intelligence in these mice. This experiment blurs the lines of what is possible and what isn't, in creating interspecies chimeras, creatures which contain cells from two different species. While this has been attempted in mice, scientists are much more reluctant to attempt similar experiments with more human-like creatures, like apes. Certain ethical guidelines also maintain that the creature being experimented on should be sterile, or at least be prevented from breeding. This isn't the only time that chimeras were created in the lab, and is likely not the last. There exist other examples in mice, like mice with human immune systems. These were created in order to be able to accurately test the side effects of drugs on a human immune system, without the need for human test subjects. Mice with rat organs have also been created, and pig-human chimeras were attempted. In the case of pig-human chimeras, a team of scientists injected more than 1,506 pig embryos, each only a few days old, with human pluripotent stem cells which can develop into any tissue. The pig embryos were then transferred into surrogate female pigs so that they can grow and develop. The development of the pigs was then observed carefully, with the human stem cells being edited to glow a fluorescent green so they can be identified. The embryos were not allowed to advance past the fetal stage and were destroyed after three to four weeks for ethical reasons. Only 186 of the pig embryos had survived, and in those, only one of 100,000 cells developed into human cells, none of which had developed into any brain cells. Despite that failure, the researchers are optimistic that this research could in the future lead to human pig chimeras with human organs. These could be used as a source of organs for people in need of organ transplantation. They could also be used for testing the effects of drugs and procedures, and observing diseases in human organs and non-human hosts. 
scientists at the University of Texas were able to develop a system that can translate people's brain signals into words. In a 2013 study, researchers at the University of Texas hooked up three participants to an fMRI machine and made them listen to 16 hours of storytime podcasts in order to be able to gauge and record how each participant's brain reacts to several words and phrases. Due to the complexity of language and the incredible number of possible word combinations, a large AI language model similar to ChatGPT was trained on the gathered data. The AI language model was then used to decode people's brain signals as they thought of certain words and stories. The result was a brain-computer interface that could decode people's conscious thoughts with a degree of accuracy. The participants were told to imagine telling one of five stories while hooked up to the fMRI machine with their thoughts being decoded. The participants were then told to tell the story verbally, which was compared to the decoded information from the machine. While the phrases used in the imagined story were not exact, and varied greatly from those decoded by the machine, much of the general gist of the stories were preserved. There are still many problems to be worked out with this system, since it mostly depends on AI prediction of the collected data, and so far isn't entirely accurate. A similar study done by researchers at the University of Berkeley was able to reconstruct videos from the brain while participants watched movies. In much the same way as the previous experiment, participants were placed into an fMRI machine and made to watch movie clips, with their brain signals being recorded to produce a dictionary of brain signals to images unique to each individual. The videos were then reconstructed using videos from YouTube. These advances in brain decoding technology might provide an alternate method of communication for people suffering from locked-in syndrome or people who have lost their ability to speak in general. As of now, there are many people suffering from locked-in syndrome that have been outfitted with brain implants or electrodes directly on the surface of their brains. These are more accurate than the fMRI method described before in decoding their brain waves, but with the downside that they are more invasive, therefore should only be used when necessary. All this, combined with the relatively new market of brain implants like Neuralink, might make mind decoding technology available to the masses. As it stands today, this technology still has many limitations, starting with the fact that the accuracy of the decoded thoughts isn't ideal, depending mostly on AI language models to do much of the prediction. Also, each brain decoding model has to be painstakingly trained on the brainwaves of each individual, with each person having to listen to hours of stories or view hours of video footage to be able to form a comprehensive decoding model that is unique to each individual. In addition to this, the devices used in this technology are relatively non-mobile, heavy, bulking machines that are not easily moved around, which are also expensive. Also, these devices can only be trained if the participants are willing, since any participant can easily throw off the process of mind decoding, either during when the program is being trained or when their thoughts are being decoded, by consciously thinking of different things. With all these limitations at the moment, this technology is currently not viable. But brain implant devices, like Elon Musk's Neuralink, might make brain decoding technology readily available in the future. And with this new technology, comes new worries and dangers, with a person's most private thoughts being available to corporations to do with as they please. This data could be sold to third parties for advertising purposes, with advertisements being tailored to each person's thoughts. Or maybe this new technology might be used in the fields of law enforcement where a person's own thoughts can be used to interrogate them, to find out whether or not they're innocent or guilty. It could also be used to spy on people, to predict the possibility of future crime, much like the movie Minority Report.